Okay, so today we are at a Sony Alpha event. We're getting to look at the new Sony A9 Mark II, and I'm gonna compare it to the A7R4, which is what I'm filming on right here. You can see we have a fair amount of Sony gear here. The new 600 F4. Feels super light, actually. I'm amazed. And then the baby I want, the 400 F2.8. It just feels good in the hand, and it just feels great. But we're gonna go pick up some Sony Tough SD cards and then uh, pick up the camera. So one thing I'm noticing about the A9 default, I'll have to dive into settings in a bit, is you're using this dial to change your continuous focus settings and it just feels a little different initially. So I'm gonna have to All play with the settings. Using 20 frames per second is insane. And it, you don't notice it like, 10 frames per second is fast on my R4, but using the A9 with the 20, it it's a noticeable difference. You don't think about it, but to double the difference, just firing up 20 photos in a second, that's insane. Okay, so I managed to find the only 70 to 200 they have in the building. So we're gonna check this out with the A9 Mark II, try and capture some action. Sorry about that. Falling a little bit behind the schedule, just because uh, I had to say hi to my friend who works here. And it's just about having some fun. This isn't the event that I kinda expected, but at least I get hands on with the camera and I can give you guys this review and comparison. You guys can thank Chelsea, she's the one holding the camera. She's uh, making it a little easy for me. We're calling it at this event. It was a cool little getting to see the camera and compare it and feel it. And we'll talk a little bit more back home about it. I also took a 400 uh, 2.8 and a 600 F4 comparison image. I'm gonna leave all the sample raw files from the A9 down below and we'll talk about pros and cons the a9 mark ii and the a9 mark one and then the a7r4 now before you can truly make a decision on which one you think is better and before i go into my decision on which i think is better for which photographer we need to kind of talk about the specs let's talk about the a9 versus the a9 mark ii first now both cameras use the same image sensor a 24 megapixel sensor they both can shoot 20 frames per second and they use the same batteries and same autofocus system. Now the A9 is still an amazing camera and it was revolutionary at the time, boasting 20 frames per second continuous shooting with no blackout shutter so you can track the action. It came out with amazing autofocus with insane calculations per second for that autofocus. Now the A9 Mark II when it comes to feature bumps may seem like a disappointment to a lot of kind of pro amateur photographers. The A9 Mark II gets about a half a stop better in image stabilization. It has a better wireless workflow if you're working off a computer. It does have a very useful D flicker with the mechanical shutter for when you're dealing with cheap LEDs or bulbs that can cause lines on the image. The improved weather ceiling is very welcome and a couple little niche features like recording voice memos over your images that I think a lot of photojournalists will use, but the average consumer won't. The A9 series of cameras is geared towards photojournalists and sports and action photographers. The 20 frames per second almost guarantee that you're gonna get that perfect shot and gives you lots to choose from to make sure you really get the action shot and everything looks perfect. The A9 Mark II did not improve upon this. However, the mechanical shutter goes from eight frames per second all the way up to 10 frames per second. I personally am a fan of a mechanical shutter just because I don't like some of the effects and distortion I may get from an electronic shutter. However, the A9 and the A9 Mark II account for this with a double stacked image sensor. So it really helps with the warping you might get from too fast a shutter speed and high action things. Now the first generation A9 saw a price drop of $1,000. It is $1,000 less than the A9 Mark II. If you already have one, I can't see any reason to truly upgrade to the A9 Mark II. But if you haven't bought an A9, here's why you might want to consider the A9 Mark II, the weather ceiling. Now for who this series of cameras is marketed towards, weather ceiling is a must have. I just imagine a sports photographer on the side of the field 
Maybe it doesn't have the rain cover and there's some unexpected rain or elements. It's nice to know that your camera is safer, at least for the time being, for you to capture the action and then get the rain cover in between. In that moment loss where maybe you want to get the rain cover because you don't trust your camera's weather sealing and you're afraid that it's going to get damaged and then you don't have a camera for, let's say, the game, the adventure that you're out on, weather sealing makes a huge difference. And that, I think, is the biggest selling point of the A9 Mark II over the A9. If you know for a fact you don't need that improved weather sealing, I can't justify getting the A9 Mark II when the A9 is $1,000 cheaper. And if you're one of those people whose workflow is going to be greatly improved by the wireless connectivity speeds, you probably don't want to consider the A9 Mark II. And here's why. The A7R4 boasts those same Wi-Fi transfer speeds, but in studio work, you control everything. You don't need insanely high shutter speeds. You don't need 20 frames per second. 10 frames per second is usually gonna get the job done and you have more megapixels to work with, better dynamic range, and you get all the benefits of the improved body. Now with that being said, I think we're ready to dive into the meat of what this video is about. And that's if you should get the A7R4 or the A9 Mark II. Both are amazing cameras geared towards the professional photographers. And if you're a general consumer, you can probably benefit from getting their predecessors for a massive discount. If action's your game and you are doing photojournalistic stuff or sports photography and you need to capture the action, go with the A9 Mark II, hands down. You're gonna benefit from having less megapixels because you can get more light in with higher ISOs. You'll have to compensate for tricky lighting situations by slowing down that shutter speed. The A7R 4 I wouldn't push that camera past 1600 ISO. It benefits from having all those megapixels, but because of all those megapixels crammed into the same space and the same size sensor, the photo sites are significantly smaller. So that means when you crank up the ISO, you're gonna see a lot more noise in your image. So if you're shooting action and you want those high shutter speeds, the a Mark II is what you're gonna to wanna to get. Now, if you're a landscape photographer and you shoot some wildlife like myself, 10 frames per second is nothing to scoff at. You are gonna miss, however, if you've used the A9, you're gonna miss that no blackout shutter and those 20 frames per second. It is double the frames per second of the A7R 4 but 10 frames per second meets my needs, and I love that flexibility of being able to crop and post if I wasn't able to get close to the wildlife like I wanted to. When it comes to flexibility and post, the A7R 4 wins hands down. The A9 Mark II is not a bad camera, but the ability to adjust, crop, and not lose image quality, the extra stops of dynamic range, really make this camera the better camera for general purposes. And if you're a hybrid shooter who likes to shoot video, the A7R 4 still might be the better option because it has those log modes, you have more creative freedom when it comes to your video recording on the camera. I will say, however, if you're in darker lighting situations, the A9 Mark II is going to be able to let in more light like I stated earlier. But if you're shooting a lot of video, you don't even want one of these cameras, you are gonna be fine with an A7 Mark III. Now let's say by the off chance you wanna be able to photograph bullets, A7R 4 isn't gonna be able to do that. If you wanna start doing that, the A9 Mark II with the electronic shutter can boast 1 32,000th of a second shutter speeds, which is insane, I don't know when you'd use that, but if you really, really, really are shooting crazy fast action paced things, I guess that's one of the reasons to get the A9 Mark II. But once again, I refer to the A9, which is the same price as the A7R 4 and it's gonna do everything that the A9 Mark II can do. Now getting into using both cameras. Both cameras benefit greatly from the new body design. It feels great in the hand holding both of them. I like knowing that the weather ceiling has been improved Getting to use that new battery grip, I can't justify $400 for a battery grip, but it does feel really good. I'm hoping some third party ones that feel good come out just to kind of keep my pinky from dangling off the edge. Now I can't stress this enough, when it comes to shooting anything action based, the A9 Mark II, even the A9 has an incredible feeling that no blackout shutter being able to see and track the action it's like watching video through that viewfinder. If they could somehow incorporate that no blackout viewfinder to the A7R 4 I would be set. But I think that's kind of unrealistic. One thing switching between them, the A7R 4 has a significantly better viewfinder. The A9 Mark II uses an older EVF. It's about 2 million dots short of the A7R 4 Going down to that viewfinder, although I have no blackout when shooting action, 
I see the difference and I very much appreciate the new EVF. The comparison feature list is short because I addressed everything that I think that was a huge upgrade with the A9 Mark II and everything that I think a shooter would want to know when deciding between the R4 and the A9 Mark II. It's a short list. The A7R4 checks more boxes for more photographers in my mind. Sony knew the market that they were trying to get with that A9 Mark II and they delivered. Which should really excite a lot of you because Sony is listening to the professionals. Once again, these are tools meant to be used by professionals. Hobbyists can benefit from using the older models or even the newer ones if they have that kind of cash to spend. And they can get great photos of their vacations and whatever. But these are tools that are meant to be used for professional purposes. And the fact that they're catering towards those professionals really gets me excited as a Sony professional shooter. I mean, a professional photographer that uses Sony cameras. I don't work for Sony. This isn't sponsored by Sony, but I have their gear. I very much enjoy their gear. I certainly hope you guys enjoyed hearing me compare the A7R4 versus the A9 Mark II. There wasn't a lot to go over. I got to play with it, got to feel it, and although I'm impressed with the no blackout viewfinder and the frames per second, I was not that impressed having the A7R4. Let me know what you guys think down below. Also, let me know if one of you guys are considering this camera. I do have affiliate links down below that goes to help support this channel if you wanna buy either of those cameras. And if you guys notice I missed something or was wrong about something, please let me know. I enjoy that, I like to learn from it. I like to know when I'm wrong so I can correct it. With that being said, I think this is where I'm gonna conclude this video. Thank you guys for watching.